As it is comprehensively known around the world that Israel and Palestine have not been getting along with each other due to several reasons. It is the world's longest continuing conflict, and many attempts have been made to resolve the issues, but in vain. In the mid-20th century, there were significant movements in the country among the Jews and among the Arabs, both ready to get the authority and power for their people in the Middle East and in this video, we will be digging into the details of the Israel and Palestine conflict. So watch until the end to get to know more and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. In 1917, during the First World War, the Balfour Declaration, a public statement issued by the British government announced support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people. And in 1920s, the clash between those two movements increased rapidly into the sectarian conflict in Palestine. And in 1930s and 1940s, it expanded into the wider Arab-Israeli conflict. Under the leadership of Hajj Amin al-Husseini, many Palestinians moved back from Damascus to mandatory Palestine evidenced by the beginning of Palestinian-Arab nationalist struggle towards establishment of their homeland. In 1993, Yitzhak Rabin, Israeli leader and Yasser Arafat from the Palestine Liberation Organization made an effort for a peaceful solution through the Oslo peace process, which was finalized as a framework for future Israeli-Palestinian relations. The affliction of the Oslo Agreement was that Israel would gradually give up control of the Palestinian territories over to the Palestinians in exchange for peace. In November 1995, the process turned into a critical situation due to the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin, when Arafat and Ehud Barak failed to reach agreement at Camp David in July 2000. Robert Malley, who was an assistant to U.S. President Bill Clinton for Arab-Israeli affairs, confirmed that while Barak made no formal written offer to Arafat, the U.S. did present concepts for peace, which were considered by the Israeli side, yet left unanswered by Arafat. The Palestinians' principal failing is that from the beginning of the Camp David summit onward, they were unable to either say yes to the American ideas or to present a cogent and specific counterproposal of their own. As a result, there are different accounts of the proposals considered. In July 2000, U.S. President Bill Clinton brought together a peace summit between Palestinian President Yasser Arafat and the Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak. Barak put forward a non-militarized Palestinian state split into three to four parts containing 87% to 92% of the West Bank, including only parts of East Jerusalem, and the entire Gaza Strip, as well as 85% of the West Bank's Jewish settlers, would be leaving to Israel no right of return to Israel, no authority over the Temple Mount, and continued Israel control over the Jordan Valley. Arafat rejected this offer because of the Israeli occupations regarding land, security settlements, and Jerusalem. President Clinton pleaded that Arafat make a counteroffer, but he did nothing. However, no suitable solution was made which would satisfy both Israeli and Palestinian demands. In January 2001, the Israeli negotiation team presented a new map of the Taba summit in Taba, Egypt, and the statement temporarily Israeli controlled areas was removed and the Palestinian accepted this while keeping in mind for more negotiation. With Israeli elections, it was appeared that the talks ended without an agreement, but both the sides issued a joint statement that the sides declare that they have never been closer to reaching an agreement and it is thus our shared belief that the remaining gaps could be bridged with the resumption of negotiations following the Israeli elections. On September 17, 2002, one peace proposal from the European Union, Russia, the United Nations and the United States showed the roadmap for peace. The purpose was not to solve the difficult questions, but left for negotiations in the later process. In 2002, the Arab Peace Initiative also known as the Saudi Initiative, was first proposed by Crown Prince Abdullah of Saudi Arabia at the Beirut summit. The purpose was to solve the conflicts between Arab-Israel generally, but particularly the conflicts between Israel and Palestine. On 28 March 2002 at the Beirut summit, the initiative was initially issued and agreed upon in 2007 in the Riyadh summit. The peace process is generally known as a two-state solution, but questions have been raised towards both sides to resolve the issue utterly. As Daniel Abraham, an American entrepreneur and founder, published on the website of The Atlantic magazine in March 2013, right now, the total number of Jews and Arabs living in Israel, the West Bank and Gaza is just under 12 million people. At the moment, a shade under 50% of the population is Jewish. 
In April 2021, Human Rights Watch published its report on the policies of Israel towards Palestinians. Living in Israel, the West Bank and the Gaza are based on discrimination. In April 2012, an internationally strong reaction of anger followed Israeli steps to further establish the Jewish settlements in the West Bank, which was a breach of the commitments according to Britain. The British Foreign Minister quoted that systematic illegal Israeli settlement activity poses the most significant and life threat to the viability of the two-state solution. In May 2012, the 27 foreign ministers of the European Union condemned Israeli settler violence and unlawful behavior and demanded to take effective measures. The Palestinian Man News Agency reported that the West, including East Jerusalem, were seeing an escalation in incitement and settler violence against Arab people with a clear protection from the occupation military. The last of which was the Thousands of Settlers March in East Jerusalem, which included slogans inciting to kill, hate, and support violence. In February 2014, incidents during 2011 to 2013, Amnesty International contended that Israeli forces employed reckless violence in the West Bank, and in some instances appeared to engage in willful killings, which would equal to war crimes. Besides the numerous fatalities, Amnesty said at least 261 Palestinians, including 67 children, had been injured by Israeli ammunition. At the same time, over 8,000 Palestinians suffered serious injuries from rubber-coated metal bullets. Only one IDF Israel Defense Forces soldier was found guilty, killing a Palestinian attempting to enter Israel illegally. The soldier was dismissed and given a one-year sentence with a five-month suspension. The IDF answered that its army held itself to the highest of professional standards, adding that when there was a suspicion of wrongdoing, it investigated and took action where appropriate. The PLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization, has crusaded for full status for Palestine at the UN, which has received worldwide support but it has been criticized for the US and Israel. But the UN Security Council has denied the full member status of Palestine. In 2011, the Hebrew University stipulated that support for a two-state solution was growing among both Israelis and Palestinians. In 2003, it was found that 58% of Israelis and 50% of Palestinians supported a two-state solution based on the Clinton parameters, compared with 47% of Israelis and 39% of Palestinians. The poll also found that 63% of Palestinians and 70% of Israelis expressed their support for an end to violence. However, it is important to note that neither side holds a single position. One of the aboriginal obstacles to resolving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is a distrust and a loss of faith between its participants. The control of Jerusalem is a particularly delicate issue. After Israel captured the Jordanian-controlled East Jerusalem in the Six-Day War, it assumed complete administrative control of East Jerusalem. In 1980, Israel passed the Jerusalem Law declaring Jerusalem, complete and united, is the capital of Israel. Many countries' majority of UN members and most international organizations do not recognize Jerusalem as part of Israel. In 2000 and 2001, at the Camp David and Taba summits, the United States proposed a plan in which the Arab parts of Jerusalem would be given to the proposed Palestinian state, while the Jewish parts of Jerusalem were given to Israel. All archaeological work under the Temple Mount would be jointly controlled by the Israeli and Palestinian governments, but the summits failed. When Jerusalem was under Jordanian control, no Jews were allowed to visit the Western Wall or other Jewish holy places. Since 1975, Israel has banned Muslims from worshipping at Joseph's Stone, a shrine considered sacred by both Jews and Muslims. Palestinian refugees lost both their homes and means of livelihood as a result of the 1948 Arab-Israeli conflict. Palestinian negotiator Yasser Arafat has publicly insisted that refugees have a right to return to the places where they lived before 1948 and 1967. However, according to reports of private peace negotiations with Israel, they have admitted the return of only 10,000 refugees and their families to Israel as part of a peace settlement. So, this was all about this video. If you got the information you were looking for, take a moment to hit the like and subscribe buttons and ring the bell icon to stay tuned. See you in the next video.